This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 30,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. Today, we're doing a high megapixel shootout between the Canon R5, the Sony Alpha One, the Sony A7R4, and the Nikon Z7 II. These cameras all have 45 megapixels or more. And some of you are like, that's insane. Nobody needs that many megapixels, but like some people really do. Certainly when I'm shooting wildlife, sometimes I have to crop and I like to be able to crop and still get a high resolution photo. You know who else crops? Like commercial photographers. Often you need to take a picture of a single product and the client's going to use it horizontally as a web banner and vertically as a magazine cover. And you really can't anticipate all the final uses, but what you can do is give them as much detail as possible. Either way, I think for most kinds of photographers, this is a relevant test. So let's get to it. I really wanted to bring you some controversial result, but I cannot find any difference between any of the pictures. <laughs> this is great news for the Alpha One because it's a high speed sports camera and other high speed sports cameras like the D6 from Nikon and the 1DX from Canon are low megapixel and they have heavy AA filters that just don't show much detail. But the Alpha One shows you all the details and gives you the high speed. My favorite thing about the Nikon Z7 Mark II is that it has the base ISO of ISO 64, like the D850 before it. And that allows me to cut a little bit more of the ambient light than would be possible with the other cameras, which have a base ISO of ISO 100. One disadvantage to this camera, the sync speed is 1 200th, and I can't fire the flash with the electronic shutter. If it had a higher sync speed, like 1 400th, then I'd again be able to cut more ambient light. This Canon R5 does a couple of things better than the Nikon. First, the sync speed is 1 250th instead of 1 200th, letting me kill a little bit more ambient light, though the ISO doesn't go down to 64, the base ISO is ISO 100. But I think my favorite thing for product photography is this flip screen here. This flip screen allows me to flip it completely flip forward. And that's not meaningful in this situation. A tilt screen is just fine, but frequently photographers do overhead shots where the camera is hanging from a boom and pointed straight down. And that ability to tilt this to the side or tilt it completely forward is incredibly useful in those scenarios where something like the Nikon Z or any of the Sony cameras would require a separate monitor or the use of a Wi-Fi app that just kind of slows you down and is one more thing to break. This Sony a7R4 is amazing. 10 more megapixels than the Canon R5 for 60 megapixels. It has a sync speed of 1 250th, just like the Canon, and it automatically turns off the exposure simulation when you attach a flash. It also has one really interesting feature, which is pixel shift, where it will combine 16 photos into one massive 250 megapixel photo. So let's see how that works now. It took about 40 16 picture pixel shift images with the A1 and the A7R4, and one of them turned out from the Alpha One. Let's zoom in to compare this 200 megapixel pixel shift image to the 50 megapixel standard image. You can see zoomed in two times and four times that there's just significantly more detail. You can just see details of the cellular structure of the plant that you cannot see with the 50 megapixel. So if you're willing to consume massive amounts of storage and lots of your own time sorting through these massive images, indeed the super resolution is possible. I have never taken a real world successful picture with it because it's ruined if there's even the tiniest amount of movement. Also, when these problems occur, there's no way to know at the time of shooting because it, you have to compile them later on your own computer. So if the picture didn't turn out, you don't know. To try to get that shot, you just take pictures over and over and over again. And at least in my experience, when you get home, none of them still turn out. So even if you want that extra detail, even if it's still subjects, I wouldn't count on it working out. Now I'm gonna set up a test for dynamic range specifically. This is the camera's ability to capture detail in both bright highlights and dark shadows. See, the human eye captures a far wider range of dynamic range than cameras typically do. But we can extract extra detail from these RAW files. And that's 
really important, not just for replicating what the human eye can see, but especially in high contrast situations like shooting into a setting sun or a wedding where the bride has a white dress and everybody else is wearing dark, dark suits. And you need to be able to pull up those details without having them look like garbage. Let's check the big rivalry first, the Alpha One versus the Canon R5. Notice I've overexposed the highlights and underexposed the shadows. So to test this first, let's decrease the entire exposure to see if there's a difference in highlights light recovery. You can see the Canon image is a little brighter and the Sony image is a little darker and retains a little more of that highlight detail. I have another video describing how ISO is fake and even though these settings are exactly the same, chances are good the Sony ISO is underrated even more than the Canon is and that explains it. Let's see if we see a similar difference in the shadows. Raising both the exposures by six stops, I bet you didn't even know there was a camera hiding here. There's almost no difference here, but I can read 200 on the ISO scale here on the R5, and I can't read it on the Alpha 1. The Sony Alpha 1 and A7R4 are virtually identical in the highlights. And in recovering the shadows, we see just a little more detail in the A7R4. Now let's compare the Alpha 1 to the Nikon Z7 Mark II. The Nikon's interesting because it supports the lower ISO 64, and that meant I had to give it a little more light to get the same exposure. First, let's drop the exposure by a couple of stops and check the highlight detail. Here we see just a tiny more highlight detail in the Nikon. Let's zoom out and check the shadow detail. This is interesting because the Nikon shows some banding in here. You can see distinct green banding, but you also get to see a little bit of the R in the A7R logo on this miniature camera. Overall, it's a tough comparison, but I'm gonna give it to Nikon by just a tiny bit for the better highlight detail and some extra details being shown in the shadows. Now we're gonna cover low light, high ISO performance, which is really important for professionals who are shooting, for example, a wedding reception or a concert, or they're shooting indoor sports. But you know, you need more than gear if you're gonna do professional work. That's true. With Professional Photographers of America, you can get everything that you need as a professional photographer, including contracts, maybe that's not your strong point, a cease and desist that you might have to send if someone takes your photo, or even insurance for your gear. If you get the top tier membership at Professional Photographers of America, you get $15,000 worth of coverage, to ensure that if anything happens, they've got your back. If you're a professional photographer and you're looking to get better at being one, check out Professional Photographers of America. You can click on the link in the description below to get $25 off your membership and to become a better photographer. Thanks, PPA. I'm actually excited about the high ISO test because I wanna see if the Canon R5 has caught up to the Sony sensors that are in the Sony and Nikon cameras. They used to be really far behind. Let's take some pictures. Let's compare the Alpha 1 to the R5. You know, you could tweak this and make one sharper or make one cleaner, but overall they just seem to have the same information in the RAW files. And I found the same thing when I compared them to the A7R4 and the Nikon Z7 Mark II. In other words, get any of these cameras and get great high ISO images and don't worry about the fact that they're high megapixel. So it's kind of a boring result, but it's good news for the Canon because all the pictures pretty much looked indistinguishable once you applied a little bit of processing. Now they each required a little bit different processing, but ultimately taking pictures in a variety of different situations, I didn't see anyone had any particular advantage. But here's a place where they might be different. Sensor stabilization. If you can shoot handheld at one eighth, one quarter, one half of a second, or even a full second, then you can get cleaner and cleaner images. And it allows you to show motion of people dancing or people in a concert. I thought that the R5 would be the best at this, but it actually tied with the Sony Alpha 1. So the R5 and the Alpha 1 are in first place. One stop behind is the Sony A7R4. And in last place, two stops behind is the Nikon Z7 II. So if you are an A7R4 shooter and you want a little better stabilization for low light stuff, the Alpha 1 actually buys you a full extra stop and that might be worth it for you. To test banding, we're gonna go upstairs because I have the most flickery LED light I think of anyone. It's pretty dramatic. This is it. You've heard of it. It's beautiful but not on camera. 
I outfitted our lamps with those color adjustable LED lights and they just don't look good on camera. They cause a ton of banding, they're flickering a lot. And so this will give us perfect dramatic results. That last video clip obviously looked terrible because LED lights in particular flicker at some rate and they're not all the same. That last one flickered probably a little bit faster than 50 times a second. So we don't see it with our human eye, but cameras can see it if the shutter speed is faster than that. And even in still photos, it's really, really obvious with some cameras, especially with the electronic shutter. The electronic shutter can show that banding in still images. And you're gonna see that if you're using the silent shutter in things like wedding receptions and press conferences, if they're artificially lit. And you won't see it with all lights, but if you're a professional photographer, you get pulled into different venues, you don't really get any say in what sort of lights are there. So it helps to know that your camera is going to be doing a pretty good job. The Alpha One won this competition. It was highly tunable. It was not perfect. It still showed banding, especially at the faster shutter speeds that you might be using for things like indoor sports. The Canon EOS R5 did really well. It was like almost as good, but it clearly doesn't have the same fast electronic shutter. Both these cameras also showed some banding even with their mechanical shutters. So mechanical shutters will help and use them when you can, but they also don't completely eliminate the banding. How did the a7R4 and the Z7 II do? The Z7 II came in third place. It did bad. It had very distinct banding. Really, the more lines of banding that you see, the worse it's going to be in general. And this also reflects on how it's going to do for things like rolling shutter during fast panning because they both relate directly to the sensor speed readout. The worst was the Sony a7R 4 with its 60 megapixels. It's got to read more data, so it makes sense that it takes longer. But here we see the most banding. And even shooting at 1 30th of a second, I still couldn't get rid of the banding. Now, the good news is you don't often have to use the electronic shutter on the Z7 Mark II or the a7R 4 You just use the mechanical shutter unless you need to be silent but the R5 and the Alpha 1 will both rely heavily on the electronic shutter for sports because they get higher frames per second. So just be aware of those limitations and know that if you are shooting sports with the Alpha 1, you should go into the shutter speed fine tuning tool and look through it and try to find that perfect shutter speed that eliminates it. We were able to get completely clean pictures even with this awful lamp at one over 1,050th of a second, which the other cameras couldn't do and which the even the Alpha One couldn't do by default. So big win for Sony. Okay, time to wrap up the final results. And we have kind of a everyone gets a prize situation, but I think the big reveal is that the Alpha One doesn't have garbage image quality like other fast readout cameras. You know, the Canon 1DX, the Nikon D6, these cameras are optimized for high frame rates, and that means they're, the sensor design is optimized to just be pushing data out as fast as possible. And that means like they have worse dynamic range than APS-C cameras, but the Alpha One doesn't have those problems. So you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. You can get the high frame rates without worrying about the image quality, and that makes it a great general purpose camera. Okay, that's all well and good, but the Nikon Z7 II one for dynamic range because it has a base ISO of 64. So if you're looking at raw images, it actually got the best image quality. And the a7R4 at 60 megapixels does have a few more megapixels. And I mean, the total sharpness is gonna depend on the lens, but it does leave you knowing that you extracted just as much detail as possible. And the R5 was kind of like the best camera at everything, like great high ISO and Okay, it had a little bit worse banding than the Alpha One, which definitely won that contest, but it also did really good. And really, we couldn't find any fatal flaws with any of these cameras other than like the severe banding under artificial lights on the Z7 Mark II and the A7R IV. So I hope this helps you spend your money wisely. Thank you to our sponsor, PPA. If you want to get a PPA membership, just check out the link in the description down below and you can get $25 off. Thanks, PPA. And we have more reviews and tutorials coming, so subscribe and click that bell. If you have follow-up questions, I can try to answer them. Add a comment down below. Bye.